Well, hello and welcome to the video for today. And uh, not in the truck today, in the office. And wanted to talk about trucking and, and as far as getting started in trucking. Uh, the new year is coming up. A lot of people are looking for uh, ways to start a business, They're looking for ways to get jobs, looking for ways to make money. Of course, we've had a lot of craziness in the world lately and a lot more people are more dire straits than even usual. And uh, even folks that are doing okay and are getting by are looking for ways to do better. And trucking right now is booming. Yeah, there are multiple opportunities to get into trucking for anybody of all different ages. Of course, you gotta meet the minimum requirements for the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regs, uh, which is 21, to drive an interstate commerce. But as long as you can meet that requirement, and you're 65 and under, although there's no official uh, age that's too old to get into trucking because that would be discriminatory, the reality is a lot of insurance companies discourage motor carriers from hiring drivers that are over 65, whether you like it or not, whether anybody tells you that or not. But if you're over 21, less than 65, you're pretty much good to go. As long as you can pass a physical, you're willing to learn some things, you're willing to get a CDL, go through uh, truck driver training school to do that. Uh, it takes about four weeks. You can either find a company that will sponsor you, meaning that they'll pay for it in exchange for you driving for them for a period of time, usually about a year, or you can pay for it yourself in the neighborhood of four to $7,000, and they do have loans and sometimes government-backed programs for uh, uh, where they'll pay for part of it, like a scholarship where they'll fund like workforce type training programs and that sort of thing. And on the upper end of that pay scale also, I mean, uh, not pay scale, but uh, years, um, there are people that do get into trucking beyond 65. It's just be aware of the fact if you're going to try to do that, it's going to be more difficult for you to do so. A lot of companies are, are not going to hire you, and they're not going to tell you why they're not hiring you. They'll just uh, answer. The official answer, if you press them, will be that they chose other applicants, considered and chose other applicants. They're not about to tell you that they're not hiring you because you're too old. <laughs> That would get them in trouble and they don't want to do that. But that's the reality. The reason is that. And more specifically, the reason is that their uh, work comp and their uh, liability insurance carriers, not all, but some, put a lot of pressure on motor carriers not to hire people uh, beyond a certain age. So there's that. And uh, you can believe it or not believe it, uh, that's up to you. But if you do have issues uh, and wonder why, you might want to reconsider that. So... Um, but again, as long as you're 21, uh, under 65, meaning a lot of people get into trucking for the first time in their 50s and their uh, mid to late 40s and uh, early 50s. And so whether they've already retired or left another career and they're starting a second career in uh, trucking, that they're going to work for another 10 or 15, or maybe even 20 years in trucking, depending on their age and their physical condition when they get into it. Regardless of what your age is, you're going to have to be able to pass a DOT physical it's not that difficult, um, but you do uh, have potential issues if you have any kind of blood pressure problems or uh, sugar-related issues and stuff. This, they're not insurmountable, but you know there are some things there that will get you in trouble. Uh, beyond that, if you're in decent health, uh, you shouldn't have any problem being able to pass a physical. You're going to have to pass a pre-employment uh, DOT drug test. You're going to have to uh, be in a random drug and alcohol testing pool the entire time that you're active as a, a professional truck driver. And a few other things. Uh, some companies will put you through an agility test, although they may call it different things. They'll have you step on and off a step multiple, multiple, multiple times to get your heart rate up. And then they'll monitor how long the heart rate takes to come back down to a resting heart rate or normal heart rate. Uh, they'll test your ability to squat down and get underneath the obstacles, to climb up and down, to simulate climbing in and out of a trailer, simulate climbing under a trailer to do inspections and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, the other reason that they're doing that is they want to make sure they're not hiring somebody that's going to be a, a work comp risk to their company. Again, whether they tell you that or not, that's really what they're trying to do. So, you know, those are the basics, the fundamentals. Uh, once you get started with a company, you will go out with a trainer, uh, usually for another 
anywhere from two to four weeks to 12 weeks, depending on the company. I use the term trainer loosely because some companies will stick you with another inexperienced driver that barely has more experience than you do, meaning he or she just came out of truck driving school themselves a few weeks earlier and are calling that a training program that is not a training program. That is a cheap teaming program and it's dangerous. And my suggestion is don't work for companies that do that. Find a company that has an actual training program. How do you know the difference? First of all, the experience of your trainer. If your trainer has less than nine months of driving experience on your own solo, not a trainer, still a trainee. Not popular, may piss some people off. I don't really give a crap. You know, it is what it is. And, and if an individual has less than nine months, they're not experienced enough to be training other people. Uh, so there's clue number one. Clue number two, and the biggest clue is, if the individual they're calling a trainer is ever allowed to get into the sleeper berth, get in the bunk and sleep anytime that you are driving the truck or at the operational controls of a commercial motor vehicle, meaning backing, close maneuvering on yards, moving the truck at all. If that trainer is doing anything other than sitting in that jump seat or outside watching what you're doing and making sure that you're safe doing it, they're not training you. They're teaming. And companies do that because they can put two inexperienced drivers in a truck that you're paying at the bottom of the pay scale and run the crap out of them and maximize revenue for the motor carrier. In other words, they're greedy. And uh, they're putting everybody's safety uh, at risk by doing that. In my opinion, they're putting the safety of uh, both the so-called trainer, who's really a trainee, and the actual trainee at risk. And they're putting the safety of everybody else on the roadway and anywhere around them at risk. And there are multiple incidents where things have gone sideways and people have got hurt or killed and worse, hurt or killed other people doing that nonsense. So <clears throat> you do you, just do it informed and make sure you consider what I just told you. If, if it's a company that's wanting to pair you up with somebody else that has a month or two months experience, uh, I'd find a better company that has a better training program. And then two, if they're wanting to team you, meaning that to, like I just explained, your trainer's gonna be sleeping at any time that you're operating that truck, find another company that's got a better training program and get through that, get some good solid experience. Once you get a little experience under your belt, um, you're gonna get your own truck. Uh, it really doesn't, if they have a quality training program with a qualified trainer, that would take somewhere between two and four weeks. If they're doing it, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks, that kind of nonsense, that's another hint that they're trying to uh, get cheap labor out of you and try to run you as much as possible at the lowest rates possible. So um, again, my opinion, but do your research, come up with your own conclusions and uh, think twice about a company that's telling you your, your, your secondary training meeting after truck driver training school is gonna be 12 weeks. That's BS, it's not necessary, it doesn't take that long. Four weeks on average, two weeks with an outstanding program, maybe six weeks on a half-ass program, but anything longer than that is abusive uh, as far as I'm concerned <clears throat> for most people. Now, if you have difficulties and you're having problems with backing and close maneuvering or something, maybe they extend it out a few days, but it doesn't take 12 weeks to get you through that training. So <clears throat> entry level trucking jobs pay good money. Uh, better than that, they will give you a career that is in demand and that you can um, continue on as far as you want. You can get into other things. You can become an owner operator. You can get your own authority, meaning that you're a trucking company, not just leased on it. Owner operator term is thrown around by all kinds of people to mean all sorts of different things. You got lease purchase people that that's referred to as owner operators. You have leased on people, meaning somebody's bought a truck and has gone and signed a contract to run under the authority of another trucking company, another motor carrier, it's leased on motor carrier. And then you have independent owner operators. And that is somebody that is, uh, that is a trucking company that has their own authority. The only difference between them and Snyder and Swift and Warner and all the big carriers is that they don't have multiple trucks. They just have the one truck and a trailer that they're operating and they're operating under their own authority. But other than that, same as the rest of the company. Some, some of them don't even have a trailer. Some of them just have a tractor and they will do what they call power only. They'll get loads from brokers and other shippers and other people that you know supply a trailer for them to pull. 
But uh, trucking can be a good thing to get into. It can also afford you uh, immediate income. It can afford you even emergency housing in the form of the truck if you need that. And while you're driving and, and uh, sitting at uh, customers waiting to be loaded or unloaded, you have an opportunity to take online courses such as what I teach at Udemy and many other instructors teach as well. You can learn about anything you want uh, from your laptop or a tablet or anything, uh, that, you know, even a cell phone, but a laptop or a tablet is better. Um, and get informed and get some information on other things that can help you make even more money. You know, for example, you can learn affiliate marketing. You can turn what is normally downtime into productive time, first of all, by using it to learn and then by using it to start your own online business that you can build at the same time that you're a truck driver. So there are multiple different things that you can do to do better in the upcoming year. So think about those things. If you're interested in any of that type of stuff, you know, trucking, entrepreneurship, business, uh, leadership, uh, efficiency, time management, all those things are, are topics and more that I teach courses on. So feel free to check back here. I also check Udemy and you can also check my primary instructor and author website at ldsewell.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon in the next video.